Hey, this is Scott here. Uh, I wanted to make a video to show people how I have my pedal set up. In other videos, I've showed you about the pedal and kind of just overview, but I've had a lot of questions coming at me about how specifically I have it set up um, to be able to automate some of the parameters. So this is what works for my configuration. I have a Pod HD 500X. I'm running Ableton Live, the full edition, on a MacBook, a 13-inch MacBook with Retina display. Um, and then I'll also show you a little bit maybe more in deep about the, the pedal board itself and what I have on there to make this work. So you'd have to figure some things out on your own if you're on a PC end of it, but this is just what has worked for me uh, on the Mac. So let me show you what's going on. On the pedal side of things, um, my audio interface is coming from the USB over to a Focusrite Scarlett 6i6. Um, I did this because it has balanced outputs. Uh, and that for me was important because I don't want to have to run DirectBox. So what I'm using are a TRS quarter inch cable that goes from the quarter inch and on the other end um, it's an XLR. So that balanced um, line means that you don't need to have a, uh, a DirectBox. All of the work is already done here at the interface. My um, umbilical cord that I'm running, I've got uh, of course these two, which is my click and loop, left or right. You could run more if you wanted to, but that's all we use. I've got um, a quarter inch, and this again is a balanced output, so you don't need to run a direct box. That goes directly into uh, one of our floor pockets on the stage. And then I'm running another XLR, and this is, um, I custom made this um, cable, but you can find these. This is a MIDI to XLR, because MIDI only uses three cables. Uh, so does DMX, by the way. Um, and so I'm, I'm running this cable, this is going to be my MIDI, and that's going back into the floor pocket, out of the floor pocket, up to our lighting console, so that's how I do those automations there. Um, my signal path is USB to here, and then audio out right here, uh, through, um, through the XLRs, I'm sorry, through the quarter inch cables. And then, um, and then I'm running uh, the, the MIDI output from here into the HD 500, out from the HD 500, uh, up to the lighting board. But if you wanted, you could also run that MIDI output to synchronize beats per minute um, or um, synchronize other HD 500 or just any, anything else to other instruments on the, um, on the stage. So that's kind of the back end of this. In detail on the pedal itself, I've got just a, a rack, um, like a power unit here. So that gives me a bunch of outputs. And then um, that's just our in-ear system. It's a cheap bearinger system, but it works okay. Uh, in other videos, I've showed you my MIDI pedal. I can't go into that in detail, but it's a, a great joy for me. And then deep down inside, I have, um, down here is my wireless receiver for my guitar. And then down in here is my wireless transmitter for my ears. Uh, and so this, this way I could just set it all down. I don't have to do a lot of setup. My setup is very, very minimal every week. So let me show you in detail a little bit more um, on the software end of things, how I have this configured. The first uh, is to make sure that you have your preferences set in live. Um, I mean, obviously some of this stuff is really kind of basic, um, but your audio interface needs to be, uh, you know, for in this case, my Scarlett 6i6 USB. Um, on the MIDI end, this is what my MIDI setup looks like. Um, I've got a network Ableton adapter that has to do with um, MIDI over Wi-Fi to our lighting system. The Teensy MIDI is my um, kind of my firing um, pedal that I made. And then here's the 6i6, so um, I don't really need the input on that, but I do need to have the track and the sync on um, in order to be able to, on the output end, in order to be able to send that to uh, my HD 500. So um, this is my standard setup. Uh, this is how I stack my worship sets. Um, there's actually some great tutorials on multitracks.com on how to do this in particular. Some things that I've tweaked on my own is I have these um, two tracks up here, light or lights and pedal. And I really could pull those together into one MIDI clip, but let me show you the details of how this works with the HD 500. It's actually a little hard to find exactly what you need to put on there in order to make this system work. Um, so this is, this is what I have set up. So on the piano roll, the note output, 
I have the lights listening to C minus um, two. And that, so when, when the playhead hits that, it outputs that MIDI information, the lights know to play a particular cue list. Now for the HD500, uh, there are two pieces of information that's, that helps uh, accomplish what I want to accomplish here. And that is the bank and the program right here. So the sub bank is like the user playlist on the HD500. And then the program is the track, is kind of the patch inside that. So the way that I have this set up every week on my HD500, I, I use the last user bank. So I, I think that's like, uh, must be the eighth bank. And then I write over, um, uh, I write over patches number one, two, three, and four uh, every week. I mean, if I have to go to five or six, if we have that many songs, then I can. And so the first um, MIDI clip on song number one, you'll see is sub bank eight, program number one. If I go over to song two, that's sub bank eight, program two. Go to song three, I have sub bank eight, program three. Now, if you, you, you obviously could configure this other ways, this is how I keep it clear and keep my setup minimal. The other thing that I use to run um, my pedal is um, a volume. So I have a separate uh, kind of patch thing right here. Um, and, and the way that I do this is I have um, the, the pedal track right there and then I'm using an envelope to control the volume so that as a worship leader, I don't have to worry about turning up or turning down my volume. I can automate that ahead of time and that allows me just to be a little bit more in the moment and have to um, fuss with things a little less. So the envelope for that, and I haven't gone super deep into this, but I know the envelope for that is MIDI control, and then it's um, number one, whatever that is, like controller one, modulation. And so I have a, just this ramp going up, so that's gonna turn up the volume from zero to 100% in, um, you know, in, in four beats or less. So you can have it a whole lot less if you wanted to. Uh, you know, I could, I could make that a little different there. So that automates all of that for me. Um, another thing that I use this for, and this is not something you have to set up, it just does it automatically. If, if you have the sync selected for the output, if you have sync selected, it will send your beats per minute back to the HD 500, and I'll show you how to configure the pedal to receive that MIDI um, data stream and sync it up. Now, let me say this that the sync isn't 100% perfect. There's probably noise in the line that um, introduces some variations in the precise beats per minute. It's maybe off by 1%. So if the beat per minute for the song is 90 beats per minute, and then I looked at the patch and what it's actually receiving, it might be 89.8 beats per minute. It's not a huge deal unless you're running a ton of delay that needs to be 100% locked in. I found that that 1% variance doesn't create ongoing issues that makes it worth manually dialing those in. Now over here, you just have to make sure that you have the uh, MIDI output correct. So my lights, um, and th today I'm gonna be going wired, so I'm gonna have the light MIDI output be Scarlet 6i6, and I'm just running on MIDI channel one. For the pedal, um, I don't want that to be the network. Uh, I want that also to be, um, well, actually, no, because I'll run it through the same thing. So I want it to be the 6i6 as well. But that's where you could send it to other uh, MIDI devices or different channels if you wanted to get more complicated in your MIDI setup. So um, that's pretty much how I use that. Uh, I won't go into detail about how to make the lighting work with this unless a lot of people start asking but I will show you how I have the HD 500 configured because I have more people asking about that than, than about anything else. So let me show you, um, let me show you my MIDI uh, setup on the HD 500. Okay, so here I am with my HD 500. Um, the view that I use is this one. So um, I don't use that, I don't use that, I use this one. And that allows me to run, um, and, and then my user bank, let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh, my user bank is I use the very last one. So when you're looking at the software, that would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, would be the the banks that you would see on Ableton, uh, at least in the MIDI the MIDI end of things. So 
If you're using a different user bank, you'll just need to align it with the proper one inside the software. So that's the, that's the one that I'm using. Um, on the setup end of things, for the beats per minute, what you need to do, if I hold down view, and then we're gonna go to page, I believe it's page six. Yeah, on, on page six, this is the setup. So this is where you could set up um, the MIDI control. Sorry, I just bumped a knob. Um, where you could set up the MIDI channel to receive this on. It's all set up for MIDI one. And then MIDI goes out through so it can get to my lighting board. But the tempo sync that I have is global. So you can see here, like you could do a preset for each song, in which case you would have to manually dial it in. But you have it set to, to global. It's gonna be listening on that MIDI channel from Ableton send that out and then your beats per minute are gonna link up, uh, your tap beats per minute. So let me hit play here and you'll see that take place. Now, here's, um, here's what I was talking about. See how the tempo for the song is 90 beats per minute, but the tempo comes through is 89.8 I guess 8.8, eight, eight, I guess that's supposed to be uh, beats per minute. So there's just a little bit of a variance. So that's picking that up. Um, and, and when I hit play on that, it also fired off the first patch. So here, let me go to um, the third song and you'll see that as soon as I press play, it went over to that patch and it lined up with the beats per minute, 72.48. So that means that when I'm, when I'm leading worship, all I have to do is select the song and hit play, and it all happens for me. Like, I don't have to change patches, I don't have to do volume, I don't have to do tap. It all just automates, and so that's really a very handy thing. Um, just another note real quick. So, for this pedal, uh, this is my version two pedal. This is using a, a Teensy, an Arduino Teensy, that has MIDI over USB in it already, and I've got instructables out there on how to do that. Um, the cool thing that this came kind of after the fact is that it gives me beat per minute syncs on that. So that's really, really helpful when uh, the band gets off and we've got a visual indicator of the tempo that's locked in automatically with, the, um, with, the, with Ableton. So I hope that answers everyone's questions. I don't think there's anything else that you'd have to set up. Um, and this is all how the HD500 receives the MIDI. It also can send MIDI, but I don't use it that way. So in theory, I could have like press this and that would output a MIDI signal to the laptop. The problem is the HD500, the way that Ableton works, you have select where you want it to play and then you have to hit another button to actually press play. So that's why I don't use this and why I have to do that because this doesn't really allow me to do two different pedal commands to press play. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I don't want to and this just works great for me. Um, I will just say a quick commercial that I have a version one board uh, currently available, and it's November of 2016 right now. Uh, my version one board works really, really well. Uh, it's got the L L uh, LED LCD display. Um, it's not quite as pretty as this, and it doesn't have that, and it doesn't have the numbers cut out. But other than that, it, it works all the same. So that's available for sale if anyone's interested in that. I uh, hope this blessed everyone. Um, I'm happy to give this information away for free. Um, and hopefully it's useful to people out there. So thanks, God bless.